Hello everybody and welcome to day 28 of my beginner sewing course. I hope you are well and today we are learning how to make this little number right here. So we have the tank top underneath and right here is the shirt that goes over it and it is a free sewing pattern that you can find on Mood Fabrics website. So I'm going to link it down below. Mood Fabrics is just a, I think, New York based company that sells fabrics and also provides um, free sewing patterns. We have used this website before um, to make the uh, circle skirt. So they had this circle skirt calculator that made our life so much easier. So thank you Mood for being so awesome and providing all these free patterns. That's really cool and it makes learning a lot easier because it's not fun to spend money on a project that might not turn out the best because it's the first time that you've really sewn. So we appreciate it. Thank you. What you'll need to do is find the page for this pattern and then sign in, uh, give out your name and your email and subscribe to their newsletter. And then they're going to send you a link via your email to uh, find the pattern that you can print on your home sewing machine. As for the instructions, they are just on their website for free. I chose this pattern because it's a mix of things that we've learned throughout this course. We have the buttons and buttonholes, the lettuce hem and a gathering stitch. So I just thought it was the perfect project. On the website, it'll also tell you everything that you need to buy. So the amount of fabric, um, the buttons, the lace trim, the thread, all that good stuff. And now without further ado, let's get into it. This is what you'll need for this project. One meter of knit fabric with at least 50% stretch, one meter of lace trim, and three or four buttons. The first thing you'll do is print the pattern. Mood says it works in both A4 and letter format. Make sure you print it to 100% scale and everything should be okay, but I recommend starting with the first page and seeing if the test square is the right size. If it is, you can move on and print the rest of the pattern. If it's not, there's a problem with your printer settings and you can try printing it in actual size. Next thing you'll need to do is place the sheets of paper in the right order. There are four rows, A, B, C, D, and five columns, one, two, three, four, five. You'll notice that there are dashed lines all around each sheet of paper. You'll need to trim off the edges of the paper, cutting exactly on those dashed lines. Now figure out which size you are and only cut out the lines that represent your size. And remember, accurate cutting equals accurate sewing. In order for this to not become a puzzle, leave every piece you cut in its respectful row and column square. It's now time to tape the pattern pieces together. Don't overlap the paper. Place each piece edges to edges and use clear tape to secure it in place. You should be left with seven different pattern pieces. Mood has assigned a letter to each of the pieces. Moving on to the fabric. You should wash your fabric before you cut it. Once that's done, fold it once and make sure you fold it in the way that the fabric stretches. You want the shirt to stretch around your body. You should place D, E and F on the fold. A, B and C are to be cut normally. Since the fabric is on the fold, you'll have two A's, two B's and two C's. And they should be mirrored, which is exactly what we want. Another thing to note is the grain line. They should all be on the straight grain of the fabric and all facing the exact same direction. You'll notice that my strap piece is perpendicular to my other pieces and that's because I wanted them to be stretchy. So they'll be going in the opposite direction from the other pieces, but at least they'll be stretchy. I am planning on wearing them as a pajama, so I wanted it to be as comfy as possible. After you've cut pieces A to F, don't unpin the pattern to the fabric just yet. You should note all the notches and markings and transfer them to the fabric. What I did is I clipped the fabric at the notches. I'm gonna highlight every notch that you should transfer so you don't miss any. These notches will help you align the pattern together later. For the E notch, you can't really clip it since it's not on the edge of the fabric, so I just placed the pin. Okay, let's get to sewing. For this project, we'll be using the lightning bowl stitch unless I state otherwise. This is so the seams won't rip when you stretch out the fabric as you put it on. At some point, you'll need to do a gathering stitch. As a reminder, that is a straight stitch with a length of four or five. Apart from that, when you use the straight stitch for this project, the length should be set to 3.5 because we are working with knit. I also recommend using a ballpoint needle. Take pieces A and D, which make up the top portion of the bodice and the back bodice, and place them right sides together, joining at the shoulder seam. Make sure you use the lightning bolt stitch for every seam, and like I said before, I'll tell you if you need to use a different stitch. Use 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Surge that seam. Once the shoulder seam is done, you should also serge all around the neckline. Next, you can attach the lace trim. There are different ways to attach lace trim, but I just went with the simplest method of top stitching. 
I also used the lightning bolt stitch here. My trim is stretchy, so it's flowy. If you want to trim that lace flat, I suggest using a non-stretch, stiffer lace trim. Take pattern piece B and fold the center front edge once, 3 eighths of an inch. Press it so it doesn't move. Then fold it again, but this time 3 quarters of an inch. Press that again and sew as close to the fold line as you can to create a placket. You should use a straight stitch here since we'll be able to see the stitch and this part doesn't require a stretch, so the seam won't break when you wear the shirt. Find the notches you placed at the bottom of piece A and sew a basting stitch between the notches. Here you should use a regular straight stitch of length 4 or 5. Remember to leave a long tail at the beginning and the end of the seam. Gather the fabric by pulling lightly on the top threads. Before tying the ends, make sure the bottom fits with the top of piece B. If it doesn't, you may have gathered the fabric either too little or too much. Personally, even if A wasn't gathered, it was still too big to fit with B, so it's either a me problem or a problem with the pattern. Let me know if you also face this issue. To resolve it, I just trimmed B at the side seams a bit, starting from the top, and towards the end I try not to trim anything, so I cut in a diagonal line. Now take A and B, or the top and bottom bodice, and place them right sides together. Sew and serge to finish the raw edge. Now there's only the side seam left to be sewn. Place the front and back bodice right sides together, sew and serge. Let's move on to the sleeve. This is a little hard to understand, so don't worry if it gives you trouble. We'll figure it out together. First step is to fold the sleeve and join it at the two edges. Make sure it's right sides together, sew and serge. Now figure out which sleeve goes on which side. Place the shirt inside out and the sleeves right side out. Insert the sleeve in the sleeve hole following the curve. Match the notches in the side seam. Make sure the front notches on the sleeve and bodice are together and that the back notches are also facing each other. You don't want the front notch to be facing the back notch. Just a reminder, the front notch is only one clip and the back notch, the back notch is two clips. There is also a notch at the top of the sleeve that is supposed to join the shoulder seam. Once you've inserted the sleeve in the armhole correctly, pin, sew and serge. Finish the sleeve in the hem with a lettuce hem. As a reminder, you fold the edge of the fabric toward the inside of the garment and pin. Then you stretch both sides of the fabric as you sew. You should use a zigzag stitch here and lower the length to one if you can. The next step is to figure out the placement of the buttonholes. The pattern didn't have any markings for that, so we have to do it ourselves. I'm using four buttons instead of three since I have a pack of four, but you do what you want. With a ruler, I decided to place each button one inch from each other, starting one inch from the top. I marked it on both plackets. I'm placing the buttons on the right wearer's side of the shirt and the holes on the left wearer's side. Now I'm inserting my button in my buttonhole presser foot and inserting it on my machine. I'm choosing the bigger hole button and lowering the buttonhole lever. The machine starts the hole exactly where the needle is, so that gives you an idea of where the hole will be located. I repeat for all buttonholes and then I hand sew each buttons on the right wearer side. What? We're not done? No, honey, we have to make the tank top now. But don't worry, the tank top is child's play compared to what we just did. Fold your straps lengthwise and sew along one side using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Trim the seam allowance to make it easier to turn right side out. Grab your loop turner and insert it in the strap. Hook it at the top and turn the fabric right side out. Place E and F right sides together and sew at the side seams. Serge the seam allowance. Serge all around the top of the fabric and then fold that serged edge once towards the inside of the tank top. 
so using the lightning bolt stitch. Take the front and find the notch. This is where I placed the pin earlier. Sew a basting stitch and gather the fabric. Tie a knot at the top. You'll notice you can't tie a knot at the bottom. That's why you should grab some elastic that's a quarter inch in width and sew it in place so the gathers don't move. You can search the extremities of your straps to make them nicer looking, but I forgot. Now match your straps to the notches. Once again, front notch is one clip, back notch is two clips. Stitch in the ditch where you stitched before to finish the top edge to make the straps as seamless as possible. Finish the edge once again with a lattice hem and you are finally done. And there you have it, you've made your first tank top and shirt and I really hope that it went well and I hope you had fun with it and I hope it wasn't too difficult. This can be a very time consuming project because there's so many little things that you have to do and since it is stretch fabric, you might have had trouble. Um, on this project, my um, fabric caught in my machine a couple of times, so you know, it happens to everyone, it's okay. Once again, your homework is just to make the tank top and the shirt and have fun with it. And I will see you in day 29 where we will learn how to make pants. So get ready. It'll be difficult.